All right, so the next part is the VNF descriptor. That's uh, the new uh, set of specifications that uh, Soul Working Group is about to uh, publish this year, hopefully. So I will do um, sharing and um, co-partner with Arturo to present this part. It's about 40, 40 minutes long, so it's a technical detail, and I hope I won't bore you. All right, so here on the VNF descriptor, that's a one crucial piece for successfully automated um, NFV, um, and it's a one crucial piece to go between the VNF providers, which is the uh, software vendor, delivering this to the customer, which is uh, service providers and operators, and how it get automated and onboarding. It's, it's uh, very crucial. So um, part of my presentation, I will go through, quickly talk about the type definitions, um, because our specification built on top of Oasis Tosca. So I have a couple slides to give you a kind of 50,000 feet Oasis Tosca uh, 101 type. And then I will go through some of the crucial piece of the, the Sol 001 uh, VNF descriptor technical parts. And then finally, Arturo will go through a series of examples. I think it's much better if, when you go through the example to really appreciate um, how, how, how some of this piece of fit together. So VNF descriptor, I mentioned earlier, is a, a, a crucial piece. Think of it just like a recipe. It's a descriptor, a recipe. It's intent for the VNF software vendors to delivering this and preparing this, their software to be delivering to the customer for onboarding and deploying, commercially deploy on um, NFV. So it contains the basic um, materials, such as um, you know, CPU, resource, storage, connectivities. Um, it also has information about the lifecycle management of the VNF, how to manage that VNF. Um, it has information on um, <clears throat> different parameters, input parameters, uh, configuration parameters, and varieties of parameters through the life of this VNF. That, and that's a very crucial piece, how, how you do the design time and make sure that design time concept, you know, the intent to deploy at the, at the deployment and then the life of that. And then the all different um, affinity and, and anti-affinity rules. Um, another important piece is the uh, deployment flavor, and I have a separate slide for that. So that's the basic overview of VNF. It's, the intent is a, it's a VNF descriptor is a for VNF providers to write it down what they intend to build and deploy this VNF commercially, right? So it's very important for the, the deployment time thinking and, and design. So in this slide, I, I really want to focus on the, the deployment flavor because that's a one, one important piece of the uh, VNF descriptor. It's a little bit unique than other types of descriptor. So we have this thing called VNF deployment flavor. Think of it as a varieties of different um, flavor or capabilities of this VNF. You can design your VNF to, to have a small you know, capacity handling to super large capacity handling, so that's the two different flavors. Um, you can de design your VNF for um, um, commercial deployments, beta testings, or trial tests. That could be a different flavors as part of the design. So within that the flavors, you have different instantiations level, how big your um, VDUs and your virtual resource you need. So within that, you have different VDU profiles, and virtual link profile to describe that. Um, and also you have different lifecycle configuration operations because each deployment flavor is independent of different lifecycle. I can have a, a, a VNF with two different deployment flavor and one VNF do not support scaling, whereas the other VNF support scaling. So that's important too. So, um, a quick overview of the VNF. Next part is the um, Oasis Tosca 101. Okay, so um, first 
um, I left the, the reference on top, upper left. I invite you to uh, click on that link to download the whole presentation from Oasis. And basically here, I just cut and paste two slides from them, um, just to highlight in the context of what we're doing in Seoul 001 Etsy. Okay, so what's uh, being, um, Oasis Tosca? Oasis Tosca, it's not, well first, when we think about Etsy, right, i 11 which is the information model. So one was intent to build the data model to explain that. So when we went out and searched for different uh, technical solution to support the, the, the VNF descriptor information model, um, we discussed with Oasis Tosca, and Oasis Tosca is not just about information or data model, they, they neither, but what they do is they combine them both into their intent model which is the most powerful parts, if you understand Oasis Tosca. So their intent model that allow you to provide um, a template that can describe topology of your VNF, and, and, and not just a VNF as, a, as an application, it could be a service. So you can think it broader, you know, from their perspective, application, service, and so forth. And, and within that, you can begin to build your applications or your services with compositions. So that's the next powerful tool, features in Oasis Tosca. Um, the requirements and capabilities is very unique. They, they go side by side. Um, you describe the requirements in one component of your software, and then you can also describe the capabilities of another component of your software, and then the orchestrators, and then you can have relationships so the orchestrators can, can find and match the, the two software components. They also have states and life cycle, and that's another important, that way you can manage each of those software components independently, okay? And then if, finally, they have policy that, that you can wrap around the entire topology or within each of the node. Now, in Oasis Tosca, um, to, to do the topology and modeling. Um, here, in this example, we have a node, main, main parts of nodes, requirement capabilities, and then relationship. Those are three major parts. Uh, groups is there, but the most part you will see is these three powerful uh, objects or, or topics. So you have a node, you describe a node of two nodes, and then you have uh, relationships. You describe the relationship, how you connect, or how these two node relationship together. And then within the relationships, you can describe the requirements, and, and, and you can do things like, if I want to connect, let's say your, your left-hand side is a web server. Node A is a web server, and node B is a database, right? In the, net, in the node A, you can write a requirement, say, I want to look for a database, not just any database, you can specifically say I want to find and connect only to SQL database. So the relationship and connect to, you can fine tune to match when you deploy this commercially at the, the cloud. Okay, so that's very much. Now the next part of presentations, I will go through explain some of the node types that Etsy and FV is developing, right? But in general, we use the same concept when we model this. So when you look at SOL001, which is the VNF and network service descriptor and, and VNF descriptor, we use all of this, but we define our own unique types. All right, so now I'm jumping back to Etsy SOL001 VNF descriptor parts. So this is a quick overview um, let me go ahead and touch the bottom part first. Um, this figure is based on um, the latest draft, version 0.11.0. That's a public uh, share available. Um, our specifications is built on top of Oasis Tosca Simple YAML version 1.2, the latest draft. And due to the understanding, we also support 1.1 for single deployments. Okay, now, as I go through some of this, a lot of this 
uh, what we call type definitions. It's the NFC, to, in order to, to compatible with OASIS Tosca, when we release our specifications, our documents will have a separate YAML file that define all the type definitions. So for you as a software vendor or orchestration or operators, you need to understand these type definition files. Now, the top picture, this is an overview. So on the left-hand side, we have a node type called VNF. That's the, the, the top representation of the VNF, right? It, it, it represents all the properties. It represents the, the interface, the lifecycle management of the VNF and with all the, the requirements for external connectivity. Now, inside that VNF, you know, we, in Etsy we have this uh, VNF, VNF components, or VDU. So here, the VDU, the dash line, is represent the basic resource. You got the compute, you got the storage, and this storage is it's one, of, one of the type of storage. We got three different type of storage. And then the internal connection points. And then, out here, each of these are the external connection point of modeling, and then the virtual link. So above here, these are the node types that we define, the basic overview of how the VNF should be representing. And then the bottoms, we have different policies to apply to the nodes that we, we want. Now, next several slides, I, I, a lot of detail, but I won't go into too very much because I don't have much time, but I invite you to, in, to download this so that way you understand the model. As I mentioned earlier, in the storage, we have three different types of storage. So here, um, we have file storage, block, and objects. So those, if your VNF requires different type of storage, then you need to use different type definitions to write in your descriptor. Okay, so that's, that's the, the, the storage, it's very important. If you can't get this, you, you won't be able to get your VNF up and running correctly. And then this is your uh, virtual compute, it's describing all your virtual uh, compute, st storage, and um, capabilities, and then what so software image artifacts you have. All right? Another part of the VNF um, descriptor, um, a little bit unique, it's related to connectivity. Um, there's two ways to express um, one of our connectivities. One, what we call the internal connection point and external connection point. And sometimes, one of our internal connection point can be re-exposed as a representation of an external connection point to model correctly so that way the orchestrations, uh, the VNF managers um, know how to orchestrate correctly. So in this example, if your VNF has one internal connection point that you want to re-expose out as an external connection point, then you would use the VDU.CP node type definitions. If you have a, a VNF that you have a separate external connection point that connect to and an internal virtual link of the VNF, then you would use the external connection point CP um, no type definitions. So there's a couple of um, possible scenario. And then in the example, Arturo will go a little bit more detail. So just be aware, because this is the most common mistakes people make when they write that service template and they use the wrong type. And then um, um, the orchestrations and uh, fail to orchestrate correctly. The next part um, is the configurable properties and modify attributes. These are two important type of um, configuration data. Um, configurable properties, um, there's a, the, the type definitions. These are type of configurable properties to intent to be sent to the VNF instance, okay? That's the, the target to config and the VNF instance to be used, right? So that's um, the most cru crucial. And the information that's sent through, okay, 
by either using SOL 3 or SOL 2 API definitions of the specification. And this, is, this information must be created by the VNF provider, because they are the one that know the VNF the most, right? So they design, they provide those VNF configurable properties to be delivering. And that's part of the v, um, VNF descriptor. Now, on top of that, now this is at the VNF level. We also have VNFC configurable properties. So if you have configuration information to be config at the VDU or the compute level of each VNFC instance, you, you, you need to provide that information also. Okay? The difference of modifiable attributes is modify attributes is also to be used um, as part of the VNF managers to, to run and managing the VNF, the whole life cycle to instantiate and so forth. So information that you can need to provide for um, intent to be delivering and managing the VNF, then you would use the modifiable attributes, okay? And mainly that's for for the LCM scripts, um, the, the operations of how this information, this information is not just a runtime information. It could be also, I'm mean, sorry, this information is not only the design time, it also can be at runtime. Because at, at the time of onboarding and at the beginning of the instantiation, all the, the the initial configuration informations and attributes get copied into the VNF info, the instance of that VNF. And once that instance is up and running, there's our different operation in SOL API that allow you to modify those um, parameters. And, and those parameters get modified, specific actions taken, okay? So the, this is a, a, a good mechanism to, to ensure you got the, the design time and runtime information. As I, as I mentioned on those, I won't go through in detail each of these attributes. What's important about this is that, because these informations are the, the vendor specific um, configurations and data types. So in our specification, we have guideline how to extend those, right? So it, it's flexible enough that, that you can can build your own data types and complex data types. So here's a list of table. The table contains a list of, of different attributes and the guideline how you extend that. And then finally, about the policy types. Um, I, I will leave a lot of them to Arturo to explain in detail, but in our spec, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, different policy. So if you break it down, to, we have the policy to how to instantiate the VNF, right? That's the first block. And then we have a second block of policies about managing and be able to dealing with scaling, right? And then affinity rules and security rules for, for each of those um, um, part of the VNF. Um, the picture on the right, it, it's representing the scaling um, representation, but Arturo will go into detail. So that's the big, quick rush through of the type definitions. It's a lot of our specification. Now, well, now that's just only one part. Now, the next part is the, the actual service template design and uses, and this is the, the, the actual piece of the recipe, right? Um, due to the limits, I only give you a, a quick snapshot what's important to make sure that when you're delivering this, this software and the service template, we are compatible with the guideline from Oasis Tosca, and you meet the guideline of Etsy um, um, SOL001 specification. So the first part, in, in Oasis Tosca, you, have to, you must provide a Tosca definition versions. In here, in this example, because m right now many of the deployments are based on version 1.1, so I want to show this. So you must make sure that you have one underscore one here, or the parser 
will fail and you won't be able to get on board. The second part's important, as I mentioned earlier, is the import of the Etsy NFE types. And that types we, we attach to our specification. So you can download, you can just, it's a prepared YAML file, you download and you're delivering it, right? Another part's important because the way uh, we model it, you as a vendor, software vendor, you have to derive from the Tosca no NFV dot VNF no type, and that's your no name, um, entity name definition that you, do, you extend it out. So that's the only one that we allow for you to extend from or, the, the, or derive from. And then finally, the flavor ID, even though your, your, your VNF support only one flavor, you still must provide the flavor ID because otherwise the operations in the VNF IPI would not work. So that's the quick technical parts of the VNF. And the final part of mine, it's just a, a status of our work. Um, as I mentioned, nearly our goal is by this Thursday. <laughs> we, we, we're going to try to bring our complete Sol 1 specification up to the stable status. Um, we are very confident that the VNFD parts is stable. And vendors and, and operators are, are right now looking at it, deploying it, um, you know, de developing it. Now, the NSD part most likely will not be 100 um, complete per IFA 14 specifications. So when we, when we do initial de release of this spec, the VNF descriptor will be complete, but the other part may not be, the, the network service descriptor. And this is a timelines, uh, timelines for um, our VNF um, Sol001 uh, release. And I think best I'll, I'll invite Arturo to come up now to give the, um, the example, which is more in detail, and then we can do Q&A. Arturo? <laughs> Okay, so good morning, and uh, my name is Arturo Martin from Ericsson. I'm a member of the NV Sol Working Group and also AC Tosca. And yeah, without further introduction, let's um, dive into the examples. We are going to look into a VNF, rather simple, which um, consists of only one VNF component. And that means that uh, the VNF descriptor has only one VDU. Uh, a VDU is uh, something that I'm going to use uh, quite often in, the, in this presentation. It's a term from NFV. It is a, a descriptor of a VNF component. <clears throat> it consists of a VDU compute part, a storage part, and uh, one or multiple connection points. In this case, we have two connection points. One is to connect to an internal virtual link. Another one is to connect to an external virtual link. <clears throat> and this VNF happens to have only one deployment flavor. Uh, now let's look at how the Tosca representation of the VNF descriptor looks like. <clears throat> First, um, we see a no type definition. Thing has mentioned it. It's a no type that addresses specifically this uh, VNF. It is derived from the generic SOL001 no type definition, but it uh, assigns values to some of the properties like the product name, or the provider name, etc. by means of putting constraints on the values. And then comes the topology template. It is, uh, uh, it is uh, directly deployable meaning it can be deployed standalone. But um, as you see, this substitution mapping rules that we have, it's a function in Tosca. Uh, what this is telling us is that you can use this deployment flavor also, or this uh, service template, sorry, 
to substitute for a node template of this VNF node type that can be present in a, as a building block in typically a network service descriptor. And then uh, we have the, the different components that make up the VNF, the node templates. Uh, the first one that you see is uh, a bit special because it's a node template of, of the VNF node type that we have just defined. And you may wonder why, if, we are, if the whole service template is representing a VNF, why do we need to have a, a node template of this type? The reason is to hold the implementations of the lifecycle operations for the VNF. Here. And the rest are the um, components of the VNF that match the, the blocks here. The, the video compute, the storage, and the video connection points, and the virtual links. These node templates, they are not um, isolated. Let's see how they are related to each other. Um, in Tosca, the way to do that is via requirements and capabilities. A node has a requirement for a certain capability which is offered by another node. And then the orchestrator uh, finds the match. Or, as we do in Sol, we explicitly indicate in the service template uh, what is the node that uh, has the, the right match. So, for example, sorry. Uh, the video compute has a requirement for a virtual storage capability, which is offered by the virtual block storage. The VDU connection point has a requirement for a virtual bindable capability that is offered by the VDU compute. So here we have at least two relationships between different components of the VNF. Another one is between the VDU connection point and the virtual link. The video connection point has a requirement for a virtual linkable capability, which is offered by the virtual link. And with these two uh, pair of requirements capabilities that I have mentioned, you uh, establish the internal connect connectivity in the VNF hmm? between the video computes that at the end they are virtual machines or containers and the virtual links. But we also want to have uh, external connectivity in the VNF, right? You want to have the possibility to connect your VNF to the external wall. Uh, in the NFV model, this is always done with a class called the VNF external connection point, which in our uh, NFV model, uh, which in our um, VNF uh, node, it's represented by uh, the requirement virtual link. Now, uh, NFV model um, um, foresees that uh, this uh, VNF external connection point can be realized in two possible ways. And what I'm showing here is one of these ways, is when the VDU connection point, so the virtual link, um, instead of connecting it to an internal link, is directly connected to an external virtual link. And that's what uh, we meant by re-exposing the VDU CP. Let's talk uh, shortly also on the VNF lifecycle management. We don't use for the VNF the standard interface from Tosca. And the reason is because uh, we have to support a number of operations from the NFV model. So we have created our own interface called VNF LCM, which the VNF uh, supports. In the VNF node type definition, the interface is included. Then in your VNF specific node type definition, um, you can also specify that uh, the operations in this interface will um, receive input values during runtime. And that is done with some of the data types that uh, Thin has uh, presented before. And in the, in the node template, what you have is the implementations for the operations, your own implementations which in this case are, are Mistral um, uh, workflows. And, okay, the last part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, scaling aspects. 
and if I have still some time, I will mention briefly the instantiation levels. So uh, scaling is one of the typical things you want to do with a VNF during its life cycle. And if it is a VNF that consists of uh, multiple parts, you probably don't want to scale them all at the same time because different parts may have different scaling needs. So the way to express all this in the VNF descriptor is with uh, scaling aspects. So, uh, think of scaling aspect as a group of VNF components that you scale together and independently of other scaling aspects. So, uh, let's look at them uh, with an example again. Uh, it's a VNF that has uh, four VNF components, a database component in blue, a ONM component in yellow, a processing VNF component in green, and a processing auxiliary VNF component in red. And the VNF designer has decided that we are going to create two scaling aspects. One only consists of the delta of the excuse me of the database component, uh, it, and we call it database scaling aspect. And another one we call it proc and encompasses the processing and the processing auxiliary VNF component. Okay, so that's the first thing we have to do. The second thing is to define what we call the initial delta. We call it also scale level zero, and that's the minimum size that the VNF has to have in order to be operational. So the, how many instances of each VNF component you must have. And that's what uh, is represented in, in this rectangle. Next thing we have to do is to specify for each of the scaling aspects how many scale levels we have. For the PROC scaling aspect, in this case, we, are, we have defined four scale levels on top of scale level zero. And we have scale level one, two, three, and four. And what we show here in this map is all possible valid scaling states that the VNF can take during its life cycle, where the red spot is the scale level zero. Okay, and there is still one more thing that we need to do, is to specify how to come from one scale level to the next one. Uh, those steps may be uniform or may not be uniform. Instead of specifying every step separately, what we do is to specify the, the possible deltas that we are going to use to go from one step to another. In this case, we are specifying two deltas for the PROC scaling aspect. Uh, delta 1 adds two instances of the processing VNFC and one instance of the processing auxiliary. But uh, delta 2 only adds two instances of the um, processing, but none instance of the processing auxiliary. And then uh, the, the last thing we have to say is to go from one step, one scale level to the next one, which of the deltas we used. So to go from a scale level zero to scale level one, we use delta one. To go from a scale level one to scale level two, we use delta two. But to go from scale level two to three, we use again delta one, right? And uh, yeah, by the way, the O&M VNFC, uh, we have decided it never needs to be a scale, so it's not part of any scaling aspect. Okay, so if you have understood more or less this concept, um, probably uh, you will not have mm, many problems to understand the Tosca representation, but uh, maybe you need to have a second reading of the, of the slides or of the spec. We do it everything with policies, so with the, I hope that the arrows will help you if you are, have an interest later to, to see exactly what part of the policies is used to, to model uh, each part of these concepts that I have explained. But uh, uh, let me at least tell you, uh, we will have one general policy with describing the, the scaling aspects that we have. Uh, for each scaling aspect, how many levels we have. 
Uh, in this case, we have uh, four, because we, you, you see here four lines. So for the PROC scaling aspect, we have four scale levels, and which delta is used for each scale level. And then for each VNF component that is participating in a scaling aspect, we will see two policies. One indicating the number of instances for the scale level zero, and another one indicating how many instances are added for each of the deltas. Okay. So last, uh, this is my last slide, and I'm going to talk uh, also quickly about the instantiation levels. Um, an instantiation level uh, tells how many instances you create from each VNF component when the VNF is deployed. A VNF descriptor must have at least one, VNF, one instantiation level, sure. But you may have more than one, because the VNF may be deployed in different scenarios with different capacity needs. If you have scaling supported in this VNF, each instantiation level must correspond to one uh, scale level in each scaling aspect that I have explained before. So if you remember the figure with all the dots, with all the scaling states, uh, an instantiation level must match exactly one of these dots. Otherwise, the VNFM would, uh, would get confused when, when it comes to scaling. But the opposite is not true. Uh, not all the, the blue dots need to correspond to an instantiation level. Again, the way to express the instantiation levels in, in the SOL001 model is with policies. We will see one general policy showing all the instantiation levels that the VNF has, and also for each of the instantiation levels to which scale level corresponds in each scaling aspect. And second, we will see for each VNF component one policy telling how many instances to create of this VNF component for each supported instantiation level. So, right, I managed to do it in, in time. <laughs> and uh, we have a little bit uh, time for, uh, for questions. I think you, if you want to come. Yes, well, for yes, please. Uh, just hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, it's me, Karim uh, Rabia from Netcracker. So, um, my question is uh, how easy can these templates uh, be tuned for uh, workloads running on containers? Because I see the scaling aspects, instantiation level is 100% mapped to, to VM-based workloads. So uh, are there any working items or work items focusing on containers, VNFs based on containers? Our, t our TSC chair is checking his head, yes. I guess, Sometimes. do you know what the, the exact work item is? <coughs> Coming. Okay. Yes, uh, we, we do have work items, but still uh, these are informative uh, study phase items. We have one work item which is the IFA 29, and we are there uh, analyzing different options, uh, and some of them are about container-based deployment. And one of the expected outcomes is basically this: to analyze whether the VNFT uh, can be used as is, or maybe. Uh, there may be some need to extend or add additional um, artifacts or aspects uh, to cover the container-based deployment. And so this will be part of the release three documentation, for example, when we do the evolution of the, of the specs um, of the sole uh, descriptors. So yes, we are analyzing it, but we don't have yet a concrete solution yet. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay. Um, 
Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much for your attention.